Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussions on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime, currently featuring Steven Universe and Star Wars The Force of Evil, among others. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. Hey, y'all. Today, Delaney and I will be taking your questions and comments on the Star vs. The Force of Evil Season 2 finale. Uh, it's our first star feedback show. We do this a lot. F- we do this every episode of Steven Universe. So basically, we, people have sent in their comments and, uh, we will be reading those and then, uh, discussing. We had a uh, episode discussion on the season two finale of Star, uh, just, uh, Monday night when it came out. So check that out. I think that was a really good discussion. Um, overlyanimated.com. Search for the Overly Animated podca- podcast on any of your, uh, and any podcatcher. Or if you're listening on YouTube, subscribe to us there. You can uh, click on our channel and find the previous video, of course. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to keep Star discussions going for a little bit. Um, I, you know, I think we have a lot to say about this show. We're going to have a uh, season three th- initial theories podcast at some point, and then uh, we can even get into uh, to some other topics. I have a few other in mind, so it's going to be good. Um, yeah, overlyanimated.com, and I uh, definitely recommend checking out that previous episode discussion on the finale. Uh, but before we get into comments, we have news on the Starfront. Um, unlike uh, some other shows, we immediately get a <laughs> general timetable for the next season so star has been renewed for season four which is very good has already been renewed for season three and season three will start in the summer Woo! yeah the reaction My prediction was correct. yeah that's very good because um we weren't i mean we weren't like watching at the time but uh between seasons one of two and star was i think a long time so uh, very good that uh it will be coming soon excited Yes, of course. And also, like, it doesn't really matter, matter the airtime if it's during this. At least for me, I'm still in college. So, like, the summer's, like, good for me. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, uh, a, a lot of shows slated for the summer, so it's going to be interesting. Summer of season plus star podcast die. Yeah, plus, they'll be fine. Plus Ladybug and uh, Netflix dumping during, during the summer. Oh, God. Plus, uh, who knows what's up with Rick and Morty. So, Ugh, uh, yeah. where is it? We'll see. Uh, nowhere. But, uh, there you go. So, I'm very excited for that from Star. So, uh, let's, let's, let's check in here, Delaney. How have you been holding up since the, <laughs> since the star season two? uh whatever you want to call it cliffhanger uh emotional ending um i don't think like i don't think my like thoughts on the finale have changed really have you recovered um i guess a little bit it's just uh, that was just so rude i mean i'm definitely not (laughs) i'm definitely not still at that point where i was like wanting to flip things in my room but (laughs) it'll be I'll, i'll survive probably i mean i probably won't be fully recovered until like the middle of season three, but it's it's okay. We'll we'll I will never be recovered <laughs> until Star and Marco are together again. That's the only that's the only way. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's yeah. fair. That is the that's <laughs> until then it is just a constant state of uh, dismay. <laughs> that's all, <laughs> dismay. Yeah, at the lack of Starco. So um yeah, still yeah, finale's great. We don't have new, we don't have new thoughts, but we'll get into all of that. So okay. Um, I have a really, a lot of feedback, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you guys were great. Uh, I sent in a lot of feedback and there's a, a lot of long comments. So I'm going to warn you, there's a lot of reading, uh, that's going to happen. Um, if I get tired of reading, I might, uh, pay a copy, paste some for you, Delaney. So we'll see about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's a lot that's of reading. Chill. So, um, yeah, so I will read the comments. We will comment on them. I haven't logically grouped them. Everyone just does too much to say, so that's good. Also, I've saved some of the comments for our uh, for our theory, season three theories podcast. This isn't even all the feedback we got, so that's very good. But, yeah, our our listeners very excited for uh, for this the second half of Star. It was everyone, everyone was very into it. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's start with patron Alex. Uh, patron Alex says, uh, would just like to comment on how, uh, bad butt moon, the, a lot of people use that word <laughs> with moon that I can't say on the pot. So, well, it was, uh, I, I had to be, I was really like yeah. concerned I was going to say it. And then I was like, Michelle, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised Michelle didn't say it. Yeah. That's, that's a good Honestly, point. I was very impressed. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Michelle, probably our second most most frequent cursor. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud. Yeah. Um, how bad but Moon is becoming and that I am happy. It seems like she'll get more of a focus in season three. Also, I am uh, interested if season three takes place mostly in Muni with uh, Marco eventually joining them via dimensional scissors. Also enjoyed the introduction to Ludo's family and wouldn't mind them making a reappearance. Uh, Rip. Goat man. Um, Goat man. Finale grade A. I think I've ca- come around to finally being more hyped about Star than SU, although upcoming <gasps> hiatus makes that bad timing. Okay. That's sure. Yeah, this is a big topic of discussion. Is uh, I think my hype about Star and lack of hype about SU has filtered onto a lot of people here. Um, clearly, the past month of Star has been more hype than the past month of Steven. But that doesn't... I don't think that means that we are more hype <laughs> overall for star than steven would you agree well i mean yeah it also we also have to put it in the context of like we're very much used to like so we had the summer of steven we've had what two bombs and since the summer of steven i don't know i get mixed up and then like we're now we're having regular like season coverage for a little bit and it's it's very it's, it's kind of like we're not even used to that early with steven and then of course we have this month of star and how it you know we it's just different i think it's we're, like stars more relevant right now kind of like there's just so much of it and like we they literally just dropped the last half of season two which is like super jam-packed way more jam like it's more jam-packed potentially than like the first half of season two and like the majority of season one so like i think it's all that we have to remember like the timing like where we are right now and then um yeah but I, i mean yeah i like i love both shows I think to seasons uh, Steven Universe is more special to me for the themes that it talks about and like what goes on and like its characters than Star. But again, I do also love Star Scale. Like they're just different shows. Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically like uh, remember your excitement now. Compare it to the uh, during the like heart of season whatever of Steven that we're on. Like right. Yeah. So uh, not a fair comparison at the moment. Um, what do you think? Well, yeah, we all have a whole separate podcast on this. But what do you think of um, season three taking place mostly in Muni? I think we'll see a lot of Muni, but I have, like, my own personal kind of theory that obviously we can talk about that more, but I, like, I can see it more being, like, they're going to be kind of on the run, is what I think, because, like, obviously, um, Toffee knows where to find them, so I feel like it might be more of kind of, like, Marco chasing after them, like, through dimensions. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, my initial, I don't really have firm thoughts on where we're going with the show. Um, who knows? Yeah. I, 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 I would say probably not mostly in Muni, but who knows? So also I mean, seeing more Muni would be cool, but it just seems like corn and castles. So I don't know. Yeah. I would like a more developed Muni. Like they, they kind of like made fun of how lack of developed it is with the corn jokes yeah. in the, in the finale. So, um, we, we, if we're going to spend more time there, we should uh, expand the mythology for sure. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, uh, David's, uh, I never know how to pronounce the YouTube, David's son should did the eight, um, who is our patron Taylor, which I knew and then I forgot and now I know again. So this is patron Taylor. And, I do that all the time with Andy. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, it's a people of screen names and they it's it's difficult. But David Sons uh, uh, says. Um, now that the main characters are splitting up, I look forward to the whole to a whole season of the characters we like not interacting. <laughs> lol, to it, yeah, lol. That's a ruby troll, ruby troll comment. So, um, Good stuff. yeah, I am very scarred from Ruby about this. Though <laughs> I really traumatized forever. The, the, I'll give him. I'll give them one episode of Star and Marco apart. But the second we hit that second episode and they're not back together, I'm going to freak out because we just went through this whole thing with Ruby and uh, it's, they're not even back together yet. (laughs) The season ended and uh, I can't have that with Star and Marco. I mean, obviously it's not my favorite thing, but it's not going to be bother. It's not going to bother me as much because like one, I don't absolutely detest Marco with all of my heart and soul. Like I do Jean. So that's like already a ma- massive improvement and Marco can carry an episode and then like, they're going to focus on star like the, duh, like we're not, it's not like we're going to have like four episodes of just Marco. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But so. okay. I, I, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not the lack of seeing star that I'm worried about. It's that I think star is really special, but I also think the maybe the even more so than hers, the number one aspect of the show is star and Marco interacting. 
Like, I think that's like the best part of Star Wars, the force of evil. So taking that away is really not a good idea, but, um, that's why, and I don't think they're going to do it for a long term, a long term period. Uh, and I, f- I can feel like maybe like star can call him maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe they, be- if they, if they somehow, uh, connected, not even though they're say yes, they, they get, maybe they'll get into something like that. But, um, I think they're aware of how, and yes, I get that separating them is going to, is in heightens the, what's going to happen when they reunite and stuff like that. But it doesn't make the, the time we spend away from them any easier in terms of like, like quality of episodes type of thing. I think they're very much aware in that the same way, like Kim Possible was aware with Kim and Ron. Like, that was the real strength of, like, Kim Possible. It wasn't just because how awesome Kim Possible is, because, like, she's awesome. But also, like, her relationship with Ron and, like, everything that was going on. And, like, that's literally the point of Kim Possible a stitch in time. Like, it's the whole point. It's literally the whole point. So I feel like, like, I feel like they might be kind of not lampooning it, but, like, they could be going very much for this, like, a lot of thematic acknowledgement of them being apart, which I think that makes it better, like, talking about them being apart and kind of having parallels as opposed to like having them like to both do like two different things. Yeah. Um, we'll see what they do. I, 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 I strongly think that they won't, this won't be long-term, but they did. Leave it certainly a, won't be Ruby link. Right. Yeah. They won't be the whole season, but they did leave a significant barrier with the confession. So it's not like it's, it's a, uh, it's an easy fix here. So right. um, they're gonna have to confront their feelings again, which they did. And um, I don't really think that's too much of a problem. I feel like it's more just the fact that star, you know, left and toffee and uh, they might be on the run and it doesn't Marco know where they are type of thing. So yeah, well, we will see. More that's what matters to Marco first and foremost. Yeah, as we saw with Marco running immediately after, he does not care that um, no. he's way more concerned with um, her as his best friend and her as someone he cares about a lot than um, this uh, feeling conflicted about her having feelings for him. Well, it's like regardless of like romantic or platonic, Marco loves Star. Yeah, like that's just a simple fact. Yeah. Also, there's no reason. Um, Marco would be super worded out by no. Star. Uh, this is not the reaction I'd, I'd care. This is, Marco kind of seemed liked it in their conversation that he was worded out by it, but I don't think he's going to be worried out by it. No. I like, he's like, I don't know. It's, I, we don't get to it. But uh, I can see there being a thing where Jackie's like, you're in love with Star. Go away. Right. Yeah. That They could totally get into that type of thing. Yeah. Because Marco's the kind of idiot that he needs that to happen to him. So it'll be fine. Yeah, uh, the, the, and Jackie's the, cool enough that she do that. Yeah, I don't think uh, Marco's gonna be like, uh, oh, I love St- right away, like, oh, I love Starno, goodbye, Jackie. Like, he's gonna, it's he's gonna be like, oh, I'm still dating Jackie, I still like Jackie. Like, it's it's gonna take probably someone yeah. to hit him over the head. But probably. but he'll be like really sad and stuff, and he'll be like, oh, Starno used to do this, and Jackie's gonna be like, Marco. Yeah, and they, and they got into a lot of. They, I thought that's where they're going in the finale. Yeah, because Jackie yeah. was like, she just like ditched them. That was really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jackie's a bro. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I thought I thought they were going that direction. We'll, we'll, we'll probably see a lot of that. Okay, um, here is a uh, frequent commenter and patron Steve's comments. Uh, it's a lot, and I have condensed. This is the condensed version. Um, I have condensed a lot of these long comments. There's uh, a few others as well. So uh, a lot of different stuff here from Steve. So let's we'll take it piece by piece. Steve says, "I agree. I disagree with Moon a little bit. I think Muni knowing the truth is important. They need some tough love in the long run. What is best? The only way for both Muni and the monsters to live happy. Uh, Muni the Muni people need to get outside of their bubble and realize how, hor- how horrible they are to the monsters. But now the Pandora's box is open. Maybe they can learn that, and in the long run, everyone will be better off. Um, so." We didn't really get into this too much, but this whole thing of Moon hiding the uh, information from her people. Right. Of, yeah. Um, I'm a little bit scarred with this trope because the 100 is doing this exact same plot right now. <laughs> and Dude. it's not good. <laughs> so um, it, it was fine. Like, it's it's just, it's just, I just don't think this is a good plot line. And I'm kind of glad that it wasn't like a long term. It was like five minutes of the show. And then it's like, okay, this isn't that interesting. I don't think the lith- leader withholding information thing is, is very interesting anymore. It's just in too much media right now. Yeah, and I also don't think, like, I really don't feel like the people of Muni are going to play into, like, anything. <laughs> like, like this is definitely gonna be more of, like, a royal family star, like, attitude thing. Not really, like, yeah, it'll obviously, like, because they're the royal family, it'll impact the people of Muni. But I really don't think it's going to, like, 
matter with the people of Muni. Yeah, I don't think uh, the people of Muni will be a significant uh, like character on the show. Like, right. it's, who who even cares? I also don't think we have, in terms of like us judging Moon, I don't think we have any sort of context. I didn't even know that the people knew about Glossaric. Like, ha- yeah, like, yeah. So, <laughs> and that was more. I think of like to me, it seemed more like they don't want to panic. Like being like. Like we've lost like the book of magic and like the like the family wand like that's more I like that would, to me that was more of like well granted that's also a really like annoying trope that's been like used five ever like we don't tell we don't want to cause a panic like shut up but I feel yeah, like that's no, more yeah. of what it was going for yeah no that is that is an inherent part of this trope like the, literally on the one hundred yeah it's 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 it's, it's I, I'm, I'm I'm a little sick of this yeah okay um. Steve says Moon having an unantagonistic or at least civil relationship with Ludo's family. That was a big surprise. I didn't expect that. Good thing she left River. He probably would have said or done something racist. Okay, yeah. Pause here. So I got some flack for calling like like a sci-fi speciesist things racist in the uh, recently. Um. So like, I apologize. Voltron. I th- yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. I I called. Uh, I said Allura was being racist, and someone got yes, mad at me. which I would counter with y'all a lot. So um, I actually think it's an accurate label, just in terms of semantics. But I do. I understand in context. It, like given the context of our society, it might be insensitive. So I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Continuing. It is. I do think it's like the ter- the ter- the sci fi term, but whatever. Um. Continuing, Moon having some empathy for the monsters. Maybe there is some Eclipsa in, to, uh, in her. Also, Moon uh, should wear her hair down more. She looked awesome with her hair down. Okay. So, Thanks. yeah. Okay. I don't know that how much there's... Yeah. Moon, I guess it's surprising that uh, Moon was civil with Ludo's family. Um, we don't really well, have context, yeah. though. I don't know. Well, we keep getting this, like, whole, like, monsters and humans. And also, like, the monsters have literally been after Star since day one. So it's hard to like, I this I do think this is kind of a shock in that like, we, but it was shocking in that what we've seen before. It's not like we knew anything otherwise. It was just really weird. Yeah. And specifically it's... Ludo's family, because like Ludo has been after Star the whole time. Yeah. Um. It, it, it seemed incongruous to Moon's image, but um, everything we got was just new information. So we didn't really have context for any of it. So I don't I don't know. Um, Steve says, great to see Ponyhead, Jana, Kelly, and the rest. I thought Jana, uh, putting her arms around Star when she was in distress is a big moment for her character. She was beyond being hilarious. It shows she does care. She has empathy. It's something we haven't seen from her. Um, just me or is these girls, uh, to Star what the Magic Council is, uh, to Moon? It makes sense they knew about Star's feelings for Marco, especially Jana. She was there to see Star's behavior during Bon Bon. And Ponyhead has known Star for a long time, so she'd probably know. Yeah. There's, we check, we always check in with Steve for our Jana comments. And I agree, this is a yes. big, uh, this is a good moment for Jana's character, for sure. You know, it was definitely like, oh, Jana's like kind of a person. Yeah. We, I feel like that's season two, and that's the slogan for season two. Is oh yeah, yeah. Jana's kind of a person. Oh right, Jane is yeah. a thing. Yeah, how is Star gonna interact with her crew while on the run? I think that's a big concern I have. Well, um, I mean, Ponyhead's just gonna pop up like whenever. I guess Ponyhead can go wherever she wants. Yeah, maybe I Kelly can see too. Ponyhead trying to help Marco. Yeah, maybe maybe Marco goes to if Marco doesn't know where Star is, like he checks the castle. Um, no Star, like he goes to Ponyhead and's like, "What's up?" Like, then, like or goes to Ponyhead, like, "Where do y'all go?" Like, where we're like, yeah. "Where are places Star would go?" Yeah, and then uh, we have another Marco Ponyhead type episode. Yeah, I could see that. Which that'd be hilarious. That's so yeah. good. Their dynamic is great. Yeah. Uh, stars, uh, indifference feelings towards Oscar and hanging out with him. Perhaps that is when she realized her true feelings for Marco and Oscar confirmed dropout. He might grow up to be like sensei if this music <laughs> career doesn't work out. So star oh, might have, so star might have dodged a bullet. I definitely star dodged a bullet there. I agree oh, well, no, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I like the Oscar sensei comparison. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty good. Uh, I think sensei is much cooler though. Well, yeah, eh, cooler and eh, relative. He's less <laughs> annoying than Oscar. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Steve says, and it got dark. Uh, Lachmid Lachm- is dead. I uh, wonder since Moon took his remains, will he be revived? I kind of hope he stays dead just to, so his sacrifice has some more meaning. And when the others get revived, it could be more important for their character development, especially Romulus and Hecabu. Oh, didn't poor do- Romulus. Yeah, poor Romulus. And Hecabu, she didn't do much, but I still love her. And she got rid of Ludo's pets in a hilarious way. Um... A lot of La- Lachmet rip Lachmet comments. Um, 
Uh, okay, Steve has another one out later, so I'll get to a little uh, pause. Um, Steve says, when Star said goodbye to Marco, I didn't know what to expect. I thought maybe she would give him a kiss on the lips. I honestly thought that, too. I'm with you, Steve. Oh, my God. I would have died. So. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, we would have just died. I would, I would not be here. Podcast. I would not be here to talk about it. I, I would not have recovered. Um, uh, but she confessed good for her, so bad for both of them. I'll just stop. Yeah. Um, don't eat, I you can't even think about the potential Stark. I can't handle it right now. Don't I can't. Okay. Um, I, I have there are a, little Dylan's and Dylan's head like exploding right now. Don't you? We we don't, I don't need a, that in my head, and then I have to go read fan fiction after. No, not happening. No. Um, I, I have it there, even though it doesn't make sense with the confession that can just be justified with Star did that for her own peace of mind. Uh, my theory: the next day, Marco and everyone else in Echo Creek's memories of Star ever coming to Earth are erased. No, I, th- I think early episodes next season you'll have a Star Muni plots and Marco Earth plots. Perhaps the first episode or two of the Marco plot being about Marco and the others regaining their memories, and then Marco, who I assume still has the scissors, in fact, could trigger the scissors could trigger his memories. Will decide whether or not to go to Muni find Star. I think the memory erasing would be a plot device to buy Star time to do what she has to do with Muni before Marco shows up. I think this is Steve's best comment this is like a um this is a uh, legitimate thing they could do um i think it would make a lot of sense with some of the tropey type stuff that they've been doing if we went this um this forgetting star exists type route no <laughs> rejected no we're not so, like, how dylan feel like this yeah. kiss would have killed him this is like i hate this i yeah. hate this like i see it in fan fiction i'm like no i'm gonna cry for like two years this sucks yeah and i see it on no 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 no. Yeah. No. The thing is, it would add so much drama, Starco drama. That the type of it. thing, the type of thing, the type of thing they've been doing, it would make a lot of sense. I literally can't. Like, I'm so yeah. irritated. I honestly thought that too, and I was like, no. Yeah. I think they're not going to do this. They um, better not. I'm going to yeah. be kicked. The only, the only thing that, yeah, the room disappearing, that kind of, that's what, could, that's what causes this thought, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, is the, that um, would be a part. Yeah, that ripped you apart. Yeah, um, I like think that's equivalent to when Cora lost the past lives, which I am the only person who will never get up for that. Okay, this is way more devastating than Cora losing the past. Uh, lies. Okay. Anyway, we we're not going to get into this for the hundredth time, but yeah, um, that's what, that's probably one of our most talked about things. I thank God. <laughs> it um, is because I like literally bring it you up, bring it up every literally time. always. Yeah. Um, I think they're not going to do this. That being said, I think it would fit be in theme with the Starco drama that's happening right now. No, I mean a hundred percent, which is why I'm like no, because I can see them doing it and I don't want it. Yeah. No. Steve says Starco is not dead. It will never be, though. I'm not sure about Lockman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so okay he's, why are people that's saying that's comment that's really funny yeah that's a good I, I really like that comment yeah so um why is everyone more concerned about him than the rest of the council because he can bring people back to life yeah, but like he's yeah. so i guess because he he, d- he like died on his own without having yeah the magic zapped out of him by uh toffee so maybe that would indicate he's more dead than the others he, he's mostly dead yeah mostly yeah um but uh it's that being said moon takes his remains just like everyone else yeah so i don't know like what they're doing with it because like obviously there's like the whole sacrifice thing which would be really great like great it hurts like ow and then it's like really sad and like star got dark real quick but i i mean i also feel like there's a really good chance that like they're all just gonna come back yeah, why would Moon take his remains if he's not coming back? Also, just that. really weird that like their eyes go black. Like, what's up with that? Yeah, I think that I think it's supposed to be that they're not like physically dead or physically dead or whatever, but they just had their magic essence drained. I think that that was my read on it, but we don't have it explained. So yeah, I knows. really don't know. Like, it just yeah. looked bad. <laughs> I was yeah, like, oh. I, I, the Moon scooping up Lockman was so deliberate, though, that I think that he has yeah. to that has to come back in some way. And like, and it, and like her getting their bodies, like yeah. Yeah, so I, I think he's going to get revived with everyone else. Although I agree that one might, I think Alex or so, whatever, say, I think that might cheapen the the sacrifice a little, but who knows, whatever. Um, Steve says, I hope this love triangle is not the same mess we saw in Korra. Oh, no, it's 100% not going to be that. We're good. I think Marco is smart enough, uh, is a smart enough guy. He's not going to make the same mistakes Mako did. No, because Mako... Ma- how, what, what do you think of the Mar- Mar- Marco-Mako comparison? They have very similar names. So they do. Um, that's the only similarity, because Marco is great and precious, and Mako sucks. So... <laughs> uh, oh. the, the pretty similar-sounding names, though. I think that that means something. 
No. Okay. No. I Mark guess is not. a sweetheart, and he's not going to do that. <laughs> he's not dumb like Mako. Um. That being said, uh, Marco had uh, spent 30 years with Hekapu, who is <laughs> kind of a firebender. So maybe, oh, my God. maybe the I, I'm going to start this Marco Mako con- conspiracy. Oh, I God. Think. Dylan is going to troll me forever <laughs> now about this, and I'm so irritated. Yeah. Thanks, that's the, Steve. Th- that's the new troll. Good job, Steve. Okay. And last, Steve, guy, getting rid of the high school setting? No, that means no Janna. Don't take away my Janna. <laughs> okay, we can if- still have Janna, but not have high school. Uh, if we have a time skip and start the new school year, perhaps in the time that Ferguson and Alonso have moved away, and if we are really lucky, so has Oscar. <laughs> so <laughs> Steve wants good. Oscar, Ferguson, Alonso gone. But yeah, don't take away Steve's Jen. I we agree. can just have like, I mean, let's okay, let's imagine a scene where Marco is like getting ready to go on his great interdimensional quest to find Star, and Janice shows up, and like she like steals the scissors, and she's like, um, you have to take me with you. Yeah, no, I I want Jan involved with with whatever we're doing. I agree. Like, like Jana, Marco, and Ponyhead, that'd be great. Dream team. Yeah, and then Marco being irritated with them the whole time—that's great. Yeah. Um. Uh, I was gonna. I'll save. I'll save that. I was. I'll, I'll save a. Uh, a future star comment later. Okay, so there's Steve Cummins. So now we have comments from Polymath. Um, Polymath um, has emailed me several times about with star comments, and um, he did it again here. And I'm not 100% sure if these were comments for the feedback show, but they're being read on the feedback show. So here you go. <laughs> there's this another long comments, and it is the edited version. So here we go from Polymath. I loved both of the episodes, Face the Music and Star Crush. However, Star Crush did leave me on the edge of my seat, literally, even during the Oscar parts. I cringed a lot during those moments, but it is still interesting how much more open Oscar is with his new haircut. Now, now it seems Star is the more mature one rather than when she first met Oscar. Agree. Yes. Um, yeah. Face the Music was good. I liked the song's lyrics, especially Behind the Jester's Cross. It took me a while to understand that, but when I saw an AMV of the song, which included Ludo, Ludo rising over Bon Bon's grave in Bon Bon, I finally understood it. Um, I guess. Ooh, that, I didn't get yeah. that. Now I get it. I guess that's true. Yeah. Watching the trailers, I was expecting a very upbeat, positive song for Star in the Dark Parts involving Glossark, and the book po- caught me off guard by a long shot. I was absolutely stunned when they ended the song with Star and Marco. I thought uh, Star and Marco in the royal outfits were adorable. Yes. Yes, yes. The yeah, image yeah. projected onto the water on stage was also really cute, Marco, at this tiny ground. I noticed in that one scene that the heart image was projected from a red light, most likely a reference to the blood moon. Hmm. Ooh, everyone that's like the number one thing people say is like uh relating things in star code to blood moon and i never oh, yeah. heard yeah i never like catch it or think that but yeah star's actions through the song were precious i like the mention of ludo's fa- I-, I thought the mention of ludo's family would be a one-off deal but they gave us ludo's uh fam what they gave us ludo's family really adds something to the character i like that they actually offer him a bit of redemption or sympathy rather than making him evil just because i actually felt sorry for ludo dennis was great too i saw a tumblr theory that ludo's family may have some to do with Eclipsa, and then Polymath linked to a Tumblr post which showing an eye symbol on lots of things now that we know are linked to Ludo's family, including the mansion and other like Ludo family heirlooms. And then also we have a shot of Eclipsa with the same eye symbol on it. So, Ooh, interesting. Yeah. So, um, Unsure if intentional, unsure if the show does stuff like that, but uh, that's really interesting if Ludo's family ties to Eclipse and maybe they're descendants. Of It'd be very Eclipsa. Gravity Falls esque. Yeah, it would be. And also, it's like an eye on it. That's, you know, that's a gravity. Yeah. 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 So that I think that's interesting. That t- Tumblr post. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can, it's, it's, it's somewhere, but yeah. So, um, it's start somewhere. somewhere. Starcrush was excellent. Again, it had me on the edge of my seat all throughout. I like that they're showing the passage of time in the series. Star and Marco's early interactions were too cute. I still didn't understand how Oscar got a car onto the convenience store rooftop. We didn't <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, c- thoughts. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was just there already. It could have been. Who knows? <laughs> Um, the whole will it fly to Mars conversation was very awkward. Star's response, however, reflects how much she's matured since the series started. I would have expected early Star to have gone along with what Oscar was saying. I love that Star actually noticed the absurdity in the notion. I like that Star is now making Oscar goo goo eyed for her rather than the other way around. I think Star has become less impulsive now. Yes. Uh, I will say the Star, the uh, Star losing her uh, Oscar crush thing happened pretty fast. It wasn't too long ago in, season, yeah. in the same season where that still existed. That's I don't, true. And I'm not sure when the turnaround on this was. Well, I think it's, a lot of it has to do, I think, with like kind of just this like sadness over Marco. 
Yeah, the drama that she, yeah, the uh, emotions that she feels from Marco have kind of clouded this, um, in, in her mind, much less important type of Also, person. hadn't she, I mean, I'm just like, again, everything happened in a blur. It's hard for me to remember, but like, had, had she, had she lost the book yet? Um, no, this was before losing the book. Yeah. yeah so the, so, so I guess you can say post, post, uh, Bon Bon star is different. Yeah. 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 Uh, the final scenes were heart wrenching. It broke my heart when Star first rejected her crush on Marco to his uh, to his face. It felt as if everything was going to be okay. Then Star's conversation with Moon felt like an assessment of how of how Star was when she arrived on Earth and how she is now. And the fact that she had to leave so soon as she was fighting an uphill battle felt so sudden. You could see it in the expression on her face when Moon tells her Toffee had returned. I wonder if Star mentioned. Uh, Toffee at the end of season one, uh, at the end of Storm the Castle, when she was explaining things. If she did not, I think Moon uh, not having to explain to Star who Toffee was, uh, nor what happened to Moon and Toffee was interesting. The fact that Star and Moon knew the gravity of some something such as Toffee, even though we do not know if they ever talked about him together even once, they share a fear and concern. Um, this is true. We yes. don't. Yeah. There's and some it's interesting too because like it's not like Star really had any recognition for Toffee like when she first met him. Yes. Uh, I, it seems like something happened off screen that provided yes. some context for them both knowing how grave Toffee returning is. And I don't yes. know if we'll ever have that addressed, to be honest. Um, but I could that, see them doing it kind of like a like River doesn't know what's going on. They have to have like, let's tell River what's going on. Yeah, that we. Yeah, I could see that. It's it's possible that the context is that just Toffee is just kind of like legendary immunity, or but that yeah. doesn't really make any sense with the Ludo interactions in season one. And like how uh, Star didn't know. Maybe she, she, Toffee's just in. Yeah, I did. St- I don't even remember from the finale. Ma- did did did, did, did Ludo, Toffee like identify himself as Toffee? Maybe he just she just didn't recognize his form. But then again, in the painting, he looks like that. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Like I don't know. Yeah, there's also too many they can be retconning things like that happens. So who yeah, knows? No, yeah, I. I yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's even a retcon. It's more just like a uh, slight oversight, just to make yeah. it. Just that things are going fast in the moment. It's not really not like an oversight. It's just slightly ignoring something that maybe yeah. needed addressing because we're ending the episode very fast. Then again, maybe that's something that'll be addressed in season three. Um, I was still stunned that Star actually admitted her feelings for Marco. That I was slightly uh, spoiled via Tumblr. No, bad. Should, don't go on Tumblr bad. when you haven't watched something. <laughs> that's the rule. I that's- literally was not on Tumblr all month because I was like, I cannot be spoiled. Yeah, no, you can't. You don't go. Yeah, you just can't do it. Blacklist. Yeah, also because enough. of Steven Universe. Because I'm yeah. like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was heartbroken when Stan Star ran off crying. The the final moments of the season were incredible. Star's room disappearing without a trace, and Marco staring back uh, to Cheers. a sight uh, from a distant past life. The room before Star after if the credits were silent, they were still. The fact that uh, we are staring at the Diaz household, missing one of its most important features, is stunning. Star is not there to sing her happy song, nor to lighten the mood after every episode. Now it is empty. It is empty. Why are you being so dramatic, bro? <laughs> this uh, I already felt depressed about it. You didn't need to accentuate. You didn't have uh, to write poetry. Yeah. In come here. on, come on, Polly Math. He was already, already feeling depressed without the depressing poetry. That's, that's good. That's good. That's very deep. Um, finally, some last minute comments. First, I'd like to know what happened to Marco when he saw Clips' chapter and how it compares to what happened to Ludo. Second, I saw a post on Tumblr that if all of Star is gone from the Earth, that could include the laser poppies. I okay, hope. See, um, I if people might have seen my tweet where I was screaming, "What about the laser puppies?" Um, he says, I hope they hide aw- and lock away Toffee's finger. I think the laser puppies are gone. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's the saddest thing, right? I mean, yeah. honestly. Yeah. They're everywhere and they're so cute. Yeah. That's not know. okay. Like, yeah. I love the laser puppies. Yeah. And like, Marco's going to be so sad. Like, he loves the laser puppies. But he will have no memory of the laser no, puppies, nor star. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. I already had to um, deal with this nonsense and fantastic beast. This isn't okay. I'm trying to even remember that happening. Oh, I guess the yeah, the rain, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Sad. Whatever. No thanks. <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, good stuff, Polyma. Thank you very much for the comments. We move to Jordan. Jordan says, I loved the season finale, like, a lot. I was so happy to see Star- the Starco confession. I mean, this is literally how teens react to things, and it's great. Also, I may have missed it, but no one commented on the silence yesterday. We Star wasn't singing her song, and it's silent and just so sad, especially after everything that happened. On the other hand, I think Star might pull a ruby or won't get a Star and Marco back until midseason. Yeah. Uh, midseason, try the whole season, bro. <laughs> That's yeah. 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 Um, 
Yeah. So I, I, this is, yeah, this is literally how teens react to things. I've always said no, one of the best, uh, things about the show is the, is the realistic portrayal of, uh, kids starring Marco's age and their interactions. And I, I agree. And I agree. The finale continued that. Yeah. They were, no, I guess they're a little composed for people their age, but, um, they're, they're pretty mature people, I think. So. Well, also they've been going on like magical adventures. So like yeah, that kind of, so, that kind of ages you up real quick. Also, you know, Marco, um, chronologically is 40 now. So, yes, you know, true. You know, <laughs> we don't even need to get into that. That's the whole <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, here's comments from uh, patron Devon. Uh, Devon says, I really liked the finale. It was one of the few shows that I watched that had the main character go through an emotional climax for the, fin- the finale instead of fighting some big bad villain. Yeah, it's an interesting um, choice to have the action away from Star and uh, the actual climax of the finale be Star's emotional arc. Yeah. I mean, I think it's. I know you kind of had like some complaints about it when we were like covering the episode. I don't necessarily I do, mean it negative now. But, well, right. Uh, yeah. I just think it's, uh, especially in this kind of show, I think this is really important, especially as we're exploring like these, like, I mean, the age that Star and Marco are, like, this is kind of really important, kind of like formative, like, yeah. things. And it's, I mean, that's just really great. Especially like, I don't know, there's just, Star in the beginning was kind of formulaic. And then we've kind of like completely branched away from that. It, granted, there's nothing wrong with formulaic, but it's just really, I don't know. I, like, I love that, that it was this emotional journey. We've been focusing on it all season and I'm excited to see more of it. And we also even had Marco go on like an emotional journey in one episode. So exploring that more will also be, I think we're probably yeah. going to get into that too. Yeah. Regardless of my um my like complaints about the action not focusing on the main characters is bad. Given th- this season was the second half of the season was all about Star's arc, and this is the perfect climax for that. This is what we saw. So, yeah. so I I did really think it was. It we was, had to have the Star go blow up. Yeah, like I think that's the best climax to the to the season. It's completely separate from my view on the action. Anyway, um, Devon says I really liked Moon in these two episodes. One of the biggest appeal uh, appeals to a character is if they are female and can kick butt just like ever anyone else. The fact that she was on the only one of the out, out of the council that didn't go down in one hit was really impressive. We really she kind of well we she was off screen. She kind of did go down, but um, well, I think that was more like it, I think it's very clear that she was that she, she was she was yeah she that. yeah 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 I agree. I, I also got that impression. Um, we Which really is why get- I was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were like, no, you just did not. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah not okay. Yeah. yeah. We really get a gauge of where star gets a raw power from. Imagine if she had yeah. more training. Yikes. She would be terrifying. A, uh, C episode, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's because I just start watching, started watching the show about a month ago and caught up by binging. So I don't remember individual episodes, but Jackie seems flat to me. Uh, just one of the typical laid back hipster kids, which is good for Marco since he's kind of serious, but I think a real purpose is for him to have another female friend f- besides star. So of the eventual star co, she would just be a friend he could lean on. Um, well, she's kind of the opposite of star. Yeah, a little. I I think Jackie I don't Jackie calling Jackie flat is like not like wrong. Um she's not like uh, she doesn't have deep characterization for sure, you know. Like but I I think given her role in the show, she's characterized appropriately and well. Well, she's more say. I mean, she's definitely characterized more than like in, uh, char- like in shows like Star vs. the First right, Evil right. and a- like with a character like like the role that Jackie plays, like she's definitely a lot more characterized and she even plays a greater role than like the typical like side character love interest. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I don't think it's a uh, unreasonable complaint to want more character from Jackie. Uh, we can say the same thing for Jana though. Like honestly, all of the characters other than honestly, the only side character who is like really well characterized is like Ponyhead. Um, I, I yeah I guess I think I think Jana is better characterized. I, it's not it's not that that far away. I think like Ferguson and Alonzo were better characterized in the first season than Jackie right now. But not like um, I didn't think that they were terrible characters. Honestly, <laughs> well, I don't know. But, I think it's yeah. more also it's the different like it's also the di- they're different characters. Like Jana yeah. is like a weirdo and like she does really weird things and she's definitely more out there. And we have this kind of like mischievous. More, it's, it's more of a distinct personality. Yeah, so it's, you know, yeah, and then yeah. Jackie like. Jackie can be like who she is and still be like a decent character. It's just the kind yeah. of character she is. Yeah, I think I think we I, we've only seen Jackie through other people's eyes so far, so it would require some sort of uh, perspective. 
To be honest, if Jackie was a guy, people would be like, oh, he's just like the cool aloof character. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so I think there's a lot of there's also a lot of that stuff like you're not used to seeing characters like Jackie. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I do. I do think um, I like I think Jackie's like f- adequately characterized. I think that um, she would potentially benefit from a perspective episode. But yeah. that also kind of is not the point of her character. So, you know, but again, I do think what she did in the finale was really nice. Like, she's really cool. Like, I think she's like, like yeah, she's, I agree. She, she, plays she, a good, she, she plays a good role like in the show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Lafi's Ludo and Toffee power of draining life. Oh my uh, god! What? Yeah, what are you in on the Lafi name? No, I'm not. In it's on not a one. ship. It's just no, a. It's so weird. What? Like, I am, like, I'm just like stunned. What? Lafi's power of, dra- of oh draining god. life force slash magical energy is really surprising. How does Toffee even know magic? Because from what we've seen, only Ludo, from we've seen from Ludo, the only spell he even knew is the levitation spell. Um, so I think this goes back to the presentation of Toffee in Into the Wands and that he's some sort of, um, some sort of past, uh, powerful force that was kind of in hiding in season one. So it's not really the Toffee we know. Right. Like, yeah. I, well, I don't know. There's also this kind of like, Toffee was, I mean, Toffee was using Ludo and like his monsters anyway. So I feel like this is more like, like he, Toffee's just doing what he's doing like now that it's convenient for him. Um, yeah, I, I think there's an element of he was hiding some sort of power, but um, he's definitely, again, using Ludo. And there's it, also, he really might not have inherent magic to him. Like, he really might need the book, or, like, he needs something to, like... Y- yeah, that's a good question. Magic. Does does uh, Laffy need the wand? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing that the season's probably going to explore, actually. Well, granted, I do think there was this, like... So the wand doesn't work for Ludo anymore. So there's, like, the question that... So there's two options, I feel like. There's, like... Either it doesn't work anymore because Toffee's in control of it, and he's like, nah, Ludo. Or it's that um, Toffee drained the magic from the wand, and that's what's, like, why he's able to do this. And it's the same color. Like, he's been using the green stuff. So, like, who knows? The green stuff. The green stuff. Yeah. Um, Yeah. We'll we'll table. This is an interesting discussion for the future, so I I have no immediate comments, but it is interesting. Um, Songs of the past weeks have been excellent. I hope they continue this good going in the next season. Overall, really good finale. I can't wait for season three to see Laffy plot come to a head. And more importantly, Starco finally happen. Yeah. Um, Yes. And yes to Laffy. And um, I I actually think I hope I do hope they have more songs uh, next season. I think. um, Yes. Brian, the composer, has been killing it with that, and they've had great guest stars singing, and yeah. Uh, definitely. I kind of like that they're rarer than even Steven Universe songs, though. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. They're like even better treats. Even even better treats. <laughs> it's like the difference between like having even, even like an treats. ice cream cone and okay. then like a milkshake. <laughs> uh, elaborate. I mean, I just think milkshakes are the best food on the universe, though, so like, I don't know. So you're saying um, star uh, star songs are uh, cookout milkshakes? Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's an Oreo chocolate milk cookout shake. <laughs> yes, Digny, you remember my cookout? Of course. Shake. Do you, do I mean, you still get cur- it? No, because like I like chocolate cobbler, and I got I a fruit one, yeah. shake. I got like an orange push up. That one's nasty. Don't do that one. No, I don't do the fruit. Actually, like the how high C milkshake is like A plus. I like how you're able to recite my cookout milkshake order from. Yeah, that was good. Good, you know, yeah, you're <laughs> good, good. Good, good. Okay, uh, comments. Uh, uh, co- your comments with co- about cookout in the comments. yeah, okay. and also yeah. like go to cookout and get an Oreo chocolate mint milkshake because yeah. Dylan is wrong about a lot of things, but he's very right about this milkshake. <laughs> I'm very finish. right about that. That's the those that are the two the eunuchs. Thing. Yeah, that I, was really good. If I have to be right about anything, I'd prefer it to be about things as consequential as cookout milkshakes. To be honest. So, um, <laughs> okay, continuing. Um, we're already, yeah, okay. Marquise, comments from Marquise says, um, I'll never get over how, fre- how uh, yeah, freaking cool. And I was, I'm a little scarred now on this, uh, having to censor things. He censors himself later in this comment. How freaking cool and awesome Moon is. Her armor and fighting style is so reminiscent of classic, uh, magical girl anime because uh, I swear she's based off everything in, uh, Madoka Magica, um, dark secrets and plot twist, basically. Um, 
I need to analyze that more. I'm a big. I can't Madoka. comment on that yeah. at all. I'm a big, big Madoka, Madoka fan. Um, I also like seeing this new uh, bad asterisk 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 layer added to her character. However, I wonder if the new season will have her revert to the sort of overbearing prissy queen she was characterized to be due to them returning to Muni and having uh, to having maybe to hide uh, ha- having Star hide. Regardless, I need a backstory episode of her in her being the undaunted AP stat. Um. Yeah, she's Moon the Undaunted. Yeah, I would love a backstory episode to, yes. uh, with how she got that name. That'd be really cool. Like, uh, also, when's Star going to get her cool name? Like, yeah, no, Star the. Uh, I mean, she's the Rebel Princess. But it has to be something cool with the Rebel Princess. Star like, the I'm Rebel. Sorry. I'm Star sorry, the Rebel. Rebel is not as good as the Undaunted. So. Yeah, Undaunted's pretty good. I don't know how we're going to top that. Let's, it's like let's... my mass spec professors. Like, if you add Cyclotron to anything, it makes it sound immediately cooler. So we need something like that. Okay, like, we'll, we'll start to draft up Star. That can be our its own podcast. Is um, We just break out a thesaurus and we run through names until yes. we find out <laughs> find out name for Star. Um, back to Marquise's comments. Uh, Star hanging out with a Jana Banana is a cute AF. Hashtag Starna. Yes. There's a there's your tweet. Tweet that out. Star hang out with a Jana Banana is cute AF hashtag Starna. Yeah, are you yeah. in on the Starna? I mean, of course. Okay, here I'll I'll, I'll comment this thing that I was going to comment now. I think now is the perfect time for us to have a star exploring her, her uh, romantic interest plot. Um, if if Marco has to be gone, it is time for Star to date a girl. Like, yes, one hundred twenty five percent, or to like, find out that she has dated a girl in the past. Oh yeah, or she just has, and we just yeah, and we just and like we're, and yeah. it's just like really chill. It's like oh yeah, like yeah. maybe we run into her like X, and I'd be like, yeah. that's a girl. <laughs> yeah, related. Is it time to give a Star the bisexual haircut? Yes. Yeah. So the referring to the I don't know shoulder length. It's um, like it's like a bob. It's like an asymmetrical yeah. bob. Yeah, which has been in many. The her, it's the Cora book four haircut. Like everyone um, knows, yeah, it's 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 a meme Tumblr post. I think that a star would look so cute in that, and um, th- this is the time. This is like the star uh, tragic arc. This is the time you cut the character's hair, <laughs> like we saw yes. with like Zuko. So, um, do I actually think they could do that? Well, like, I feel like this kind of like. I mean, I just keep it like. I don't understand them just going to the castle and like boarding themselves in. I feel like they're going to go on the run and like right, maybe yeah. they need to gather like magical things. I don't know. You, you could maybe she it's more convenient for her not to have long hair on the run maybe she's disguising herself like there's a lot of reasons with, to do like it. a ponytail yeah. i don't care yeah and um these two new are outfits. very yeah new outfits that could be a big thing for can we get marco a new outfit please oh don't insult the red hoodie i mean no i know the red hoodie's like iconic but like come on iconic dude come on like i'm just avatar they got new outfits every season and i just like things like that yeah that'd be cool um some form of new red hoodie for marco that uh still was yeah. yeah um but yeah i think these two things are related for star the the uh the shorter haircut and the uh girlfriend um hashtag get star girlfriend there you go yeah. um seeing ludo's mom with a black eye is sad kind of because i'm pretty sure it's implied she's uh, neglectful and evil stuff uh, also what are his parents the king of <laughs> good question um birds <laughs> uh <laughs> I really like the song, not just because of uh, Patrick Stump either. Maybe I like how it's split up into three segments, one about Starving Awesome sounding just like her, one dark ominous talking about the stuff that happened in the second half of the season, essentially. I love the bass in this part. Also, Starko, so perfectly awkward, but kind of annoyingly forced IMO. That's the whole point, though. Like, and it was yes. great. Yeah, it was great. The fight is awesome. More moon being in good cinematography. Yes, that was all caps. That's why I tried to I agree. like that. And uh was it yes uh, or was it yeah still? It was yes, okay, like thank bu- you. like like bubbles in uh the uh panda first panda yes. episode, yeah. Uh but IMO them killing off the commission and trying to make it emotional doesn't work too well because since we barely knew them. That's I mean fair. I like them, yeah, sure, but they should I buy into that episodes. stuff though like so hard. Like I saw Moon like and I was like <gasps> like I just I yeah. don't know, it gets me like I am literally that person always. Yeah. So no, they did they did it really well too. Um this is they one did. of the best season finales of any show I've ever seen and i applaud the show for reaching some serious heights and growth i wonder how the third and fourth seasons will develop and i've always envisioned star S- svtfoe being just super silly and weird and with some cool occasional plot episodes will they uh, cool it down with all the filler and go to more plot heavy will the show be too dragged out in season four will people ever see how obviously canon starco is and be quiet will eclipse of the end game <laughs> i don't know but i'm ready to find out in like six months no not that long just a few months three months sooner three four months yeah that was a good end 
ending paragraph. Um, will uh, people ever uh, see how obviously Canon Starko is? No, because people watch the show and turn their brains off and they think Jarko and stuff. Right? You can ship Jarko, but also like, there are people on. who literally watch shows and just refuse to ship whatever is like yeah, the no. main ship. So like, it's there's, yeah, there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah. Like, yeah, um, I disagree with this being one of the best season finales. I think this was like very good. Top ten. These were both top ten episodes of Star, but I wouldn't put either of these in like the top three of the show. Even I, I would top five maybe, but I think that um, Blood Moon, uh, Sit Running with Scissors, and Bomb Bon are better episodes than either of these finale episodes. And I, I think I, I think Baby's in contention. Like I oh, think Baby's really yeah. good. Yeah, and um, I think like uh, Candle Cares isn't. You know, there's there's a lot of good ones. What do you think? Um, like, I think this is, like, re- the finale episodes were, like, really good, but not necessarily, like, super, like, inc- absolutely incredible. Well, I I mean, I think they were, I mean, I really enjoyed them, obviously. I would, I mean, I think Running with Scissors is, like, potentially, like, the best episode ever. But, um, I, oh, you said one of the episodes and I didn't agree with it, but I don't remember now. <laughs> Too late, uh, yeah, okay. Definitely top five. Like, they're, I mean, they're really good. Like, these are great. And I do, they're great season finales, but, like, I'm not going to put it up there. Like, for me, like best season finale of a show I've ever watched ever is like they're competing with Korra and I'm like no sorry yeah, I mean, like, these, 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 are, these aren't Avatar Korra finales you can, no. these are potentially better than like Korra book too but these aren't and um, I definitely yeah. I don't think it's better than the Rick and Morty finale yeah and Rick and Morty finales aren't even the best episodes of right. the show but yeah and, and and Star the Star season one finale was like good but not like incredible right. and this is a big improvement in the finale so I, I did like that no it's so great like I love Star and like Star like when I first started watching it I was like okay whatever and now I'm like yeah. oh my god Star so yeah um so the, i have a comment here from patron andy and this is controversial tm i'm gonna read it but i might table this discussion for a future podcast because i don't know if i want to get into it 55 minutes in but andy says i'm going to preface this by saying i'm a huge starco shipper but i think the but i think this arc we've seen we've been seeing is much more satisfying if they don't end up together so <laughs> does have a crush on marco i heard but controversial it's... and i was like what are we going to talk about and now i'm like okay now i see <laughs> Not controversial sure. okay. to me. Okay, I know. Obviously, don't you interrupted my serious reading of this important comment? Okay, <laughs> jeez. Um, <laughs> I think this arc we've been seeing is what could be more contra- Delaney. What could be more controversial than saying that Starco should not end up together? That's like the most controversial <laughs> thing you could possibly say in all of the world. So, except except like Zatara, but like okay, yeah, true. This is <laughs> we're not into that territory, but um, but I think this arc we've been seeing is much more satisfying. They don't end up together star does have a crush on marco but it's a crush crushes end all the time you go on a date with someone and you realize it's not what you want and that's it or you grow past it they've been treating stars character a lot of respect this season and i'm looking forward to whichever path they choose okay this is not a new debate i think this is the no. this is the debate this is the position michelle took on um on yes. starco um and i i'm gonna i'll probably table this to see what she has to say to this but um it's it's still a valid point is what i would say i i don't know i don't know what's changed i i, I think this is still a valid point and i also don't think that um like for me, it's not important whether they're literally together at the end of the show. Like it, whether they're dating and they're soulmates at the end of the show, or whether they've tried it and um, they realize they're better just as friends. The important part is that we explore the arc of it. Yes. Yeah. Like I don't care if they're together at the end. But I well, the thing that- is, too, like it really, it honest to God, doesn't matter if it's just platonic or romantic, it's just this, like, because it's good either way, because, like, we have this really healthy, realistic, cute, adorable, like, friendship, romance, whatever, and it's great. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, I do think that um, there's a danger in legitimizing um, these type of crush things that uh, kind of Andy get into in that um, it's more satisfying if we explore this just being a crush. But I also don't think that's what they presented. I think this is being presented as real feelings based off of them being best friends. That's I think emphasizing that really helps that. I, I don't think this is we're getting into uh, this this type of crush territory. Like I think that this is um, this is not star crushing on uh, Oscar. This is different. Like I think the finale really emphasized that. I think that this is legitimate like romantic feelings. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, this is like, I mean, I'm going to bring it up. It's Disney, and it's the same. Like, this is like when Kim and Ron got together on Kim Possible. Like, that's what this is. It's like two best friends. They've been, like, they're really great friends. They've been on, like, these crazy adventures, and they fall in love, and that's great. Love it. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Granted, that's also fine. Like, it's also really important to have, like, um, relationships between um, the genders, and, like, they don't have to, like, be a thing. That's fine, too. I don't care. But, like... Either one of those is great. I just love like how it's been 
like how it's been executed so far on the show has been great. It's really healthy. It's awesome. And it's cute. Like it's yeah. just good stuff. Like it's really yeah. positive. You know how, to, no matter how you spin it, I just really ship it cause it's adorable. Yeah. But like, I'm also fine if they don't get together. Granted, it's kind of weird though, because Steven and Connie on Steven universe are also really cute, but I like a hundred percent don't ship it. So I don't know. S- same, weird. same. It's weird. Um, I don't know. So yeah, if, if if the if the argument is um it's just a crush, I think we've addressed that already. I think it's not just a crush. If the argument is that it's super heteronormative, I agree, and yes. I think that you can partly deal with that by having Star Data Girl. So more <laughs> hashtag Star Data Girlfriend. So Or Marco um, gets a boyfriend. I don't care. Right, like, yeah. Um let's let's do this too. Both so, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> both at once and everyone goes crazy. That would be yeah, it'd be too much. Um Lot to close out, Yaoi Kuza says, um, oh man, were you serious when you tossed out the idea of a Jarko episode? I hope that you guys actually do it. While I'm, I'll, I'll admit Star has Endgame written all over it. Jarko is adorable and supportive and amazing and totally deserves a closer look. We could totally do a Jarko podcast. Yeah, yes. Sure. Yeah. I, I think... Um, Shipping I love podcasts the- are like our thing. Yeah. If you see Ladybug Roundtables, we did uh, oh my God, four we did. podcasts on the different iterations of Marinette like, Nature. Every version you can have because it's yeah. ridiculous. Well, it's all, yeah. It's, it's, that's a very Ladybug specific thing. And yeah, I we think can... we also had a Moralia podcast because that's yeah, my yeah, life. Yeah, we did. Yeah, because it's, it's, yeah. Like we're here um, for oh, like I need your a, ships. Yeah. I knew, I saw this um, Chloe and Marinette. Uh, fan art. Of and course you did, because that's yeah. your favorite thing. I, w- I mean, I wasn't even looking for it. It just showed up. <laughs> that sounds really fake. <laughs> okay, no, yes. it's true. No, I'm not saying that I go on the tag. I mean, look, it just I, this is a person I follow, so it just showed up. Okay. Um, okay, you, that's cute. They're like yeah. dancing. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty great. Okay, yeah, for the right. Okay, deep <laughs> window. It's mine and Dylan's friendship. We message each other like <laughs> pictures we know the other one would like on Tumblr. Yes. yes. And like funny things. It's constant. I mean, this I feel like really that's cute. like it's like a typical friendship. Yeah, that's pretty. That's what it is. And Marinette has like this great red red. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Um. Yeah. So we can do Jarko podcast. Um. I also like this um attitude from the Jarko ship. A lot of uh, the uh, Starco obviously endgame, but uh, Jarko is great. Like that's totally good opinion. Like yes, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Like, as it, I'm just like, I'm so done with like shipping wars. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm too yeah, no, old the, for this. Like, I, agree. I have I, scars from yeah. like Korra. Like, I'm done. Yeah, I see these things happening on uh, from a distance in the star fandom. Like, I'm like, I've been okay. in like, lol, you guys. I've been in the Korasami trenches. Okay, like, I can't yeah. deal with this. One of these things is obviously the cat ang. Like, you will understand at yes. some point. <laughs> yes, but, uh, you'll figure it out. Yeah, Jarko's not even the second most ship. It's the Tom and Marco. That's uh, second yes. most. Yeah, which that's fine. Yeah, and I'm like, again, where is Tom? Is he going to be relevant ever again? Um, yeah, the, the, my, my problem with Tom and Marco is not the two of them. It's just that Tom's not a character. Like, yeah, you know, they, yeah. So also the whole, like his entire character is just like, he's a demon and he's angry and it's like, okay. Yeah. They did. I did have the one episode three uh, in the first half of season two. That was, that was a pretty big Tom co episode. So, or Tom, hey. no, not Tom. Tom. Yeah. They, I don't know. It's, I do, I do like that Marco is the Katara of the series and not star. Like yeah, Marco's no, the one, really every, Marco's the one everyone ships with anyone. Like there's also like uh Marco Poo. Like it's, yeah, Marco's the, the shipped one. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Okay. Delaney, last comments. That's, that's all the feedback. Oh, I don't, I don't even know. There's just a lot yeah. to talk about. We're going to like, there's yeah. plenty of round table topics. Yeah. And I have um, several uh, comments, parts of comments uh, saved for the season uh, three theories one. So we will get into a lot of stuff there. So, so if, y'all um, send, if y'all send me asks, I'm really slow and I'm sorry if y'all have sent me an ask and I didn't see it. Cause I like forget to check Tumblr. I apologize. Yeah. Cause she's avoiding spoilers. And because like, I'm like super busy and I'm like, Oh right. Tumblr's a thing. And I have to check Pokemon go religiously. So like, yeah, no, that's more important. I mean, come Tumblr on. loses out. Yeah. I mean, gen two, I mean, come on, that's more important. So my girlfriend wanted me to tell you specifically Dylan that she has to peach you. Suck it. I, I heard, I heard this already though. <laughs> I, you didn't hear the, the suck it part. Though. Oh, I didn't hear the, oh. from her. I mean, I guess I'm kind of annoyed cause I haven't hatched any of them, but also, I don't know. So <laughs> I haven't hatched anything like that either. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, yeah. So let, let us know your comments on uh, Pokemon go. And what did we talk about in the middle? Oh, <laughs> cookout, cookout. Yeah. Okay. Cookout, yeah. Cookout. Yeah. yeah. What this are your is favorite, actually, this... what are your favorite cookout combinations? One, this is important stuff. Cause like, what if it's like groundbreaking stuff we have to try? Yeah, that's true. This could be very important. Yeah. Um, even though I don't have any cookouts near me. Anymore, also, but, they have yeah. 
cream slushies now at Sonic. I got one because I finally mm-hmm. got to live my dream of having a blue coconut cream slushie. It's great. Go get it. Interesting. Interesting. And if you don't, if you're like, let's cook out, then you don't live in the South, American South. So that's all that means. <laughs> so sure. um, uh, there you go. There's our feedback. Um, make sure you subscribe to us wherever you're listening to uh, hear more of our star podcast, upcoming Steven Universe discussion or Mm, I think I'm putting this out after the 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 whatever episode I was about to mention. So. What is time? We don't yeah. know. Regardless, there's going to be some more Steven coming up anyway, so uh, we'll see when that is. And we're going to have season three. There is a uh, soon upcoming. I also want to get into um, fave episodes, the season two as a whole, favorite characters. I don't know if those that's all one podcast or two podcasts or three podcasts. You know, like we'll see. We got to get in uh, our infamous top. Like so, we're like so we're famous yeah. for like shipping podcast but then also the lists yeah i mean i don't know famous is a stretch i think uh in my mind <laughs> this is the primary goal so yes. uh that's what happens well, dylan yeah. has to have his list it's very important. yeah it is very important so um yeah send in uh i at, who will be number three on my favorite characters list is up for debate um <laughs> i think that's i previously said toffee but i think there's a few contenders interesting including, you know like Jana, toffee yeah. um Pekapu. I feel like Hecker food could be like, yeah, there's it's, it's tough. I mean, number one and two are locked in. Yeah. (laughs) Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So we will see. Uh, there's your cliffhanger for (laughs) whenever we record that. So, uh, thank you guys listening. Check out overlyanimated.com. Um, I mentioned a lot of our patrons who gave in, uh, gave us feedback. You too can become a patron and, uh, can participate in a Facebook, uh, only patron group discussions, uh, Hopping recently, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot being discussed. You can check that out at patreoncom slash animated. Watch this like two year old video from me and Mel about uh, about becoming a patron. And thank you much to all of our patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Catherine, aka Cookie Cat. Thank you, Catherine. And um, we will uh, be back whenever with more discussions <laughs> on, on stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. What else? last thoughts, Delaney? Uh, you like Davon? We can you can get on our Facebook page. Like if you join, become a patron, and get in the Facebook group, we can also yell at you to make you watch shows like Star that you might not already watch. Um, yeah, I I, I made a post at some point in the pa- the Facebook group saying, uh, I know most of you patrons don't watch Star yet, but you're doing that now. So, yep. <laughs> but uh, I have to greet. And yeah, that's that also after- how mine and Dylan's friendship works. Yeah. That's true. I mean, it's more like we're gonna have to podcast about the show. So, yes. <laughs> so time but then it's things like Doctor Who, and I have become the one of the like I love Doctor Who, and it's because Dylan made me watch it. Yeah, I mean that was I've said this, but that's like that was like literally the most obvious wreck that in in the history of the <laughs> world. Like I meet Delaney, and then I see you guys want to start to him. Like this show is like literally meant for you as a person. Um, that you couldn't couldn't be more obvious. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, star is meant for everyone though yes yeah there you go that's our that's our hashtag concluding so thank you guys very much for listening and we will see you next time bye bye